Art, wine, and travel was on the west side of Paso Robles, and we heard about a tour, taste, and tailgate event you could go on, put on by one of the local wineries. So we thought we'd go take a look. Hi, welcome to Adelaide. My name is Terry Colton. I'm a winemaker here at Adelaide. Uh, we're on the west side of Paso Robles, about 10 miles outside of town and about 14 miles from the ocean uh, behind Hearst Castle. The elevation of the winery is about 2,000 feet and uh, we have 145 planted acres of grapes that range between 1,500 feet and 1,900 feet of elevation. They're all pretty mountainous vineyards and uh, we've got this beautiful uh, calcareous soil that we have out here on the west side. It's pretty unique to uh, California. Uh, it's one of the only areas in California that has calcareous soils. Of the 145 planted acres, we grow actually 23 different varietals, everything from Viognier, Roussan, Grenache Blanc, Picou Blanc uh, on the Rhone Whites, we have some Chardonnay, uh, we have this uh, historic Pinot Noir vineyard that was planted back in 1964 by Dr. Stanley Hoffman. It's uh, 48 year old vines now and just beautiful uh, fruit we get from that. We only get about a ton an acre, but what we get is just phenomenal fruit. It's about 1900 feet, so that it, it's across the swale, so it it's definitely gets more of a cooling influence from the uh, uh, wind coming in from the uh, ocean in the afternoons and keeps the, the Pinot in, in a really nice spot. Dr. Hoffman did a great job by putting it in that spot. Uh, a lot of foresight from, from him. Um, we also do uh, Grenache, Morvedres, Sinso, Quinoas, uh, all room red grapes, Syrah, and uh, we have an 18 acre head prune dry farm. Zinfandel vineyard that was planted uh, the year I came here in 2003 and it's uh, we took clippings from two of the older uh, Zinfandel vineyards in the area one uh, was the old Martinelli vineyard which is probably around 90 years old right now and we took clippings from uh, the Clevenger vineyard, vineyard that originally came from the Wilpeak vineyard and that vineyard is about 100 years old so we have these two historic uh, uh, vineyards that we got to take some clippings from then we propagated in our and uh, it's all head trim dry farm, 12 by 12 spacing, so big wide spacing for the dry farming. We don't irrigate it at all. It only gets rain in the winter and then uh, basically uh, since we don't get rain in the summer, uh, it's on its own for the rest of the time. It's pretty much tough love, uh, but it's a brilliant vineyard. We get some great fruit from that also. Uh, we also have a small port vineyard where we have Triga National Tinka Cow and Susau, and we make a Portuguese uh, a style port from that. Uh, but we can't call it port because it's not from port, so we call it uh, method uh, produced in the traditional Portuguese method, which we basically do. We get some nice high proof brandy from uh, St. George Spirits, uh, Hanger One Vodka producers up in uh, Alameda, and we blend that into the uh, fermenting uh, pumice and squeeze it off and then age it for two years, and that's our port program. So we're here in the barrel room. Uh, this is our main barrel room uh, in, uh, at, at Adelaide here. Uh, I use a lot of pungents on the Rhone varietals especially and also on the Zinfandel. And uh, they're a much bigger barrel than the normal barrel you see. They hold over double the volume of a normal barrel. It's called a, a pungent. Normal bar barrels are usually called a barrique. So these hold about 500 liters and a barrique holds about 225. So um, about 130 gallons roughly and 59 gallons in the smaller barrels. We have some people here to help us try some wine, so uh, here we go. So this is a brand new barrel. Uh, this wine has been in this barrel since uh, it was barreled down during harvest of the 2010 vintage. So it went on the uh, in on the 12th of the two, uh, October 12th, uh, 2010, and it's lived in this barrel ever since. Never been moved. So it's really going to take on the character of this this uh, yeah barrel. All right, well let's go to the neutral barrel now. So this barrel was first filled in 2006, and uh, it's, again, the wine is from uh, October 2010, so it's been in the barrel ever since, but the barrel was used for three years first, so it's more of a neutral character. You're going to get more of the fruit um, of it and less of that tannin, and when you blend these two together later to make a... Uh, to make the final wine, that's what gives it the balance. The new oak uh, with the, the nice fruit mm, forward. We'll figure out later the called the tour barrel. taste and tailgate, where you get driven around in this vehicle uh, and you come through the vineyards. Um, we try some wine, 
right next to the vines where they're grown from and we have a little picnic uh, it's a lot of fun so with that in mind we're out here in the vineyards we're on the HMR ranch and again the the diversity of the geology and the and the different soils is is quite significant here I wonder if you can see that just to the left here again where the walnut trees are how much more uh, red if you will the, the soil is there's a lot more clay and it's that volcanic basalt that we spoke about and it's ostensibly north facing so deeper richer soils which for are too fertile for what we want here um, as Terry alluded to we're we're much more about quality than we are about quantity so quite low yields two tons to the acres and expressing um, the soil and the area and the specific varietals we have grown here so again the walnuts are on these north facing slopes and as you look it's a perfect example with the road right here just at the at the apex again you can see how white and chalky it is and then on the south side just over this hill that's where all the vineyards are and we'll cruise there now and look take a look at some Pinot Noir What's become, I have found it really interesting uh, talking to the professors down at Cal Poly with the soil science is the the diverse geography, geology we have here in Paso um, as a layman my, my understanding is that, that you have a significant amount of both sedimentary ocean floor material which is which is these white rocks here and then also where the walnuts are over here uh, it's kind of difficult to tell today but they're more north facing on the it's more of a volcanic igneous uh, basalt type of rock so the old timers a walnut needs more water than an almond needs more water than a grapevine so they planted the walnuts on the generally on the north facing slopes where the soil is richer and deeper and then the the almonds could survive on the south facing slopes and so here at Adelaide we look for areas on the ranch where there's struggling or failing almond orchards and uh, we've developed a, a lot of vineyards on those sites it's quite interesting on this on this little hill here as you see if you look right at the at the apex if you took a, a plane through there this white chalky the locals call it chalk rock this white chalky rock is is very much more near the surface on the south facing side slopes um, this was this whole area was ocean floor at one point and um, you know we've got we've got there's, a, there's some limestone here um, which is rare for California it's what's the geographic the the, uh, the geological formation is is not dissimilar to many of the hallowed vineyards of Europe and it does give um, an elusive minerality uh, flavor to the wine kind of a saline uh, almost a salty flavor which is very highly desirable it's in the red wines and it's very pure in the white wines also and as, as you see on these south facing slopes because of erosion over the millennia these this white chalky bedrock is is very much more exposed and near the surface with only you know six inches or maybe a foot of topsoil then it goes into into this combination of soil and and fractured rock that that's quite deep and so the vines because this is sedimentary and layered down the vines can work their way through it here we are at the picnic spot which is what we enjoy the conclusion of the tour taste and tailgating trip and uh, Back where we started the original spot, you get a nice look over the vineyards. Now you know what we're looking at. The third wine we're enjoying here is called Version, and it's a uh, classic Southern Rhone blend based on the three principal grapes of uh, the Chateau Neuf region in France. Uh, these grapes are grown here now, being Mauvedre, Grenache, and Syrah. So this is the 2009, it goes quite nicely with lunch. Well this was a great learning experience and a great tour. We advise anybody who's in town to go on it. Now uh, visit our website Art Wine and Travel and view more movies about the wine industry, art and travel.